Chum is frequently described as sacred Himalayan Buddhist dance, usually performed once a year in monasteries and their communities. Chum features awe-inspiring music, dramatic masks, elaborate costumes, and powerful dance movements in a spectacular religious and social event. You may even have seen photos and video of Chum performances in tour advertisements. These images are from 1991 in Sikkim, where I was at Rimtek Monastery helping with tanka conservation. You can see traditional Chum attire. The old slip brocades, if torn and shredding from usage, were pieced together again and again, and fabric never wasted. The delicate handwoven silk brocade flowed with the dance. This presentation shares the ongoing conservation work taking place in Sum Valley, a remote community in the high altitude mountain region of Nepal bordering on Tibet. Working with Treasure Caretaker Training, TCT, our conservators are invited to travel to this hard to reach region to be of service to the community. TCT is registered as a nonprofit in the US. TCT constantly updates our team members according to the project and venue. Our advisors include Buddhist teachers and scholars, and TCT works directly with monastics and community members who are the daily caretakers of these treasures, respectfully offering them low cost and practical tools that combine science with traditional methods. Risk assessment is an important part of our, our approach and Buddhist or Global hosted a video that you can watch at another time all about our risk assessment approach using situations within monasteries and their communities. In 2022, I was the first professional conservator invited into this remote region. A network of villages within a centuries-old culture, led by a hereditary line of married Buddhist leaders. There are no roads, yet the culture is changing quickly with internet access, trekkers, and young people going away for education and work. The community leaders are concerned about the dissolution of their traditions and cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible. As expressed by a tsumpa, tsumpa denotes a person or custom of tsum, quote, we regard texts, tankas, and statues as not only family treasures, but memories of our past generations, unquote. This area of tsum is especially interesting as many treasures were brought over the mountains from Tibet and left in Sum for safekeeping as people traveled onwards. These treasures, rarely seen, are kept inside trunks in monasteries and in homes. Our team has been invited in to see them for purposes of documentation, conservation stabilization procedures, safe rehousing, all according to wishes of the community leaders. This remote area can only be reached by a trek of several days or by expensive helicopter access. It is prone to natural disaster. Rains can wash out the trekking paths leading to landslides and the danger of rising rivers. And during the Cham performances, the heavy rain and sleet continued, pounding down on the dancers and soaking their elaborate attire during their dance. Lama Pasang is a hereditary leader of Tsum Nak Labrang and considers preservation of local traditions to be an important part of his responsibilities. Trained in cham dancing from childhood, he recalls learning from his father all the techniques and about the dance robes and their prescribed iconography. Due to his status in the community, he features prominently in the yearly cham performance. Lama Pasang places the beginning date of Cham in Sumnak Labrang at the 12th century. The practice is still going on there for 25 generations. He considers Tsumpa Cham one of the most important local traditions to preserve. The towns in the region take turns hosting Tsumpa Cham. One year in Leiru village, one year in Sum village, according to the lunar calendar. Lama Pasang explains that the Tsumpa Cham tradition is part of their oral history, passed down from generation to generation. Since the oral tradition is waning and younger generations are moving away, he sees the need for documentation of the Cham attire and dances, every stitch and every step, according to local tradition. 
Lama Pasang is also concerned about the longevity of the older traditional textiles, as well as the newer Cham attire. And he requested advice from our conservators on their safe storage within the monastery. The entire interview with Lama Pasang is available for you when we have more time. In the past generations and centuries, the community did not have all the Cham attire it needed to complete the iconography of deities enacted in the Sumpa Cham. The older costumes, according to Lama Pasang, were brought from Tibet or donated by the local community. When I asked Lama Pasang about the older robes used by traditional generations previously, he said they were in storage in the monastery. Now, however, a complete series of attire has recently been donated. The new Cham robes are made from fine Varanasi silk and sewn by traditional tailors in Kathmandu. The boots and masks are also made by artisans specializing in these traditional forms. In October of 2022, I traveled to remote Sum on the same helicopter that transported the new robes, masks, boots, and implements, along with a Cham dance master and a donor from New York who grew up in Sum. In this image, the dance master from Benchen Monastery in Kathmandu supervises loading in Kathmandu Airport. It was tense. During the perilous transport from Kathmandu to the Tsum community, the helicopter was overloaded with Cham attire, robes, etc., and we flew through a storm of wind and rain. In this section, you'll see the transformative process of donning Cham dance attire. The process of each dancer being assigned and trying on a mask, possibly a crown, elaborate robes or character costume, boots, which may have been worn by previous generations of dancers, or maybe newer, etc., is supervised by the Cham dance masters. In this video, women from Tsum are preparing to dance as female deities, donning their attire. Scholars have asked me to show older traditional Cham attire from the region. These are from a nearby 500-year-old village temple. They are stored in the village gompo or temple when not in use. All costumes are carefully prepared and are ready for the dancers' changes because they dance as several different deities. Specific attire is reserved for the main lamas of the monastery and village elders. For example, the large and elaborate golden figure of Padma Sambhava is only worn by Dungse Lama Pema. Now you're invited to see Cham dance rehearsals in the main Tsum monastery, led by Dungse Lama Pema and his brother Lama Pasang. I documented practice sessions of singing and dancing. The dancers practice late into the night in the Tsum Monastery courtyard, dancing in the dark, the cold, and the rain. Except for the visiting monks, dancers are from the Tsum Nak and from surrounding villages, and they have families. They farm. Cham is performed once a year, so rehearsals are necessary and joyous. <laughs> the dance master taught sacred dances to nuns who had trekked through Trangu Monastery up the hills through rain and landslide conditions to join in these Tupacham dances. Dancing in the Himalayan rainstorms. Unusual for October, the weather was very cold with sleet and heavy rain. Nonetheless, the Cham continued. The dancers stepped, leaped, and spun through the puddles on the slate courtyard paving stones. The elaborate chum costumes became soaked and heavy on the bodies of the dancers, and the wet soles of their boots slipped. While dancers danced, 
others kept dry under the eaves of monastery buildings. Dancing in the rain, the costumes become soaking wet. Padmasampava is the main deity for this community. And Dungsi Lama Pema, a Buddhist teacher originally from Sum, who now teaches in North America, wore this costume and blessed community members in the rain. The Padmasampava attire creates a strong presence and is carried by several men walking over the Buddhist teacher within the costume. It was even heavier when wet. <laughs> The legendary Buddhist saint Milarepa came to Tsum Valley. There is a cave within trekking distance of the monastery where he meditated, which is why the Milarepa dance is so important to the local community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Nepal Opera Group was invited to Tsum to perform the Milarepa play according to Lama Pasang for the first time in 2022. This was highly popular with community members from the surrounding villages. These costumes had traveled on the helicopter through the rainstorm with me in the helicopter with the dance master. And this is the yacht costume folded up. Some women joyously perform local dances through the Himalayan rainstorms, dressed in traditional Tsum attire of hand-woven yakbul garments and their aprons indicating their marital status. <laughs> Monks, attired in robes and masks, climb the monastery steps after performing in heavy soaked garments. Let's look at drying the chama tire after use and before storage. In the many years of researching traditional usage and care of cham costumes, I have seen damp and stained robes and boots put into storage until the next year, still damp. In Sum, following the performance of the dances, the rain continued. At first, the soaking wet robes were hung up in the main shrine hall. When the weather changed and the sun appeared, robes, boots, masks, and props were hung up or laid out everywhere in the monastery courtyard. Storage Traditional storage Through the decades, I have documented traditional storage methods. In many monasteries, the boots after being worn, disappeared into large bags that once held grain, and the masks were wrapped and stored in bins or placed on shelves. Robes were folded into trunks and suitcases with paradichlorobenzene inside or on folded shelves. Safer storage. Lama Pasang requested us to share simple and low-cost storage methods to ensure longevity of the Chama tire and our TCT team created this video that is very well received in the monasteries.
Conclusion. This research paper and presentation depict textile conservation in a traditional and remote region. When conservators are invited by the community for advice and hands-on work with community members on their own traditional Cham dance treasures. The community welcomes you to visit, and please contact me for further information. Thank you.